this guy. But that's what great players do. Even when their form is not ideal, they make it happen. But Hikaru's form has been ideal thus far in the first two games. What strategy is he going to adopt in the opening? Is he going to go all out, Amon? Or is he going to play something a little bit more tame? I, I think the, the thing about when you're at that level, you're so strong in chess, is that even when you're playing in a way that's kind of boring or not taking much risk, there's still so much that the other player has to, to put in to just neutralizing or not getting a worse position. The guy just accidentally gets a good position. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the collective factors that we uh, collectively refer to as the Hikaru effect, right? It's Part of it is that feeling that you're always worse, even when rationally, objectively, you know that you're not. And Hikaru, he's essayed a Bogo Indian with his last move, E6, E5. He wants to carve out that juicy C5 square and his knight. Uh, is ready to jump into that square at a moment's notice. Of course, if you take twice, and you're going to potentially lose a piece uh, along the D-file after the trade, Black can put a rook on D8. That seems out of the question. Is Ju yeah. Jun likelier to just keep the tension? Yes, she actually adds to the tension on the queen side. Yeah, and, and actually a plan that, um, that I've seen White do a lot in these positions is something along the lines of, like, you know, a knight going to f1 and to e3 so maybe rook e1 knight f1 knight from f3 to d2 and then the knight from mm. f1 to e3 white eyeballs that d5 square but also wants to leave that d pawn on d4 because the knight on a6 you can already see if you ever push that pawn or capture on e5 the c5 square is just right for the taking that knight is going to be on c5 faster than a teenager you know, eats a free donut. Um, and that brings back some memories of yes. uh, college. Or donuts donuts in the dorm lounge. And by the time you come there two seconds later, the knights are already on C5, and there are no donuts remaining. Okay, I need to stop talking about donuts because now I want one. I'd have to do a little Dunkin' Donuts trip during the commentary month. I think you'll be able to handle it. But let's see yeah, if June can, and June I'm fine. will be I'm able good. to handle the tension in the center. How about that transition? <laughs> Hey, that was, uh, that was pretty uh, smooth. I see no holes in that transition, unlike donuts. Um, and unlike the C5 square. <laughs> I'd we're like we're milking this perhaps, to the extreme. Rook D1, okay, same idea. I, I guess the rook going to uh, D1 also means, though, that the E-pawn is not supported. And, you know, these, these knights aren't so easy to, uh, to move. Another way I was just thinking you could bring the knight there is knight H4 f5 to e3 mm. and i guess the benefit of that is that you're simultaneously protecting the e4 pawn which has just become a lot more important since he has put his rook on e8 i love positions like these because they're not about king safety both sides have no problems with their king but their centers are not safe the tension has reached a peak i'm on and it's a battle of who flinches first because if white plays d5, does that lose the game immediately? Are you much worse? No, but you've conceded the c5 square, and that's exactly what Ju and Jun has done. She waited for Hikaru to play rook e8. Now the rook on e8 kind of looks a little bit dumb, so she's gained the tempo in a way. And knight c5 really isn't the end of the world. Let's not overstate the case. Yeah, I, I have to say the way that my you know brain sort of functions is that, oh, white played d5? Game over. Black, black wins. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, That's C5 it. <laughs> square, you, you couldn't have given up that square. Um, obviously, as you pointed out, it's not the be-all, end-all. But it does mean that strategically, Hikaru has achieved essentially the maximum for what his position could hope for. The knight on A6 defending the B-pawn on B4. If you ever capture it, the knight's just going to take back. I think the way that Ju Wenjin has approached this game oh. is just, it's too compliant, um, it, in her play. And her last move was even more compliant, because what she does is closes down the queen side, eliminates a source of tension that I think is favorable for white, because it was keeping the a6 knight at bay. I was going to point out, bishop c8 is automatic in this position. Why? Well, you might be rerouting your bishop to g4, but more importantly, you're preparing the sort of typical King's Indian type plan, f7, f5. White is completely devoid of play on either side of the board, Amon, and as crazy as it sounds, um, Yukaru is close to being positionally winning here. As much of an exaggeration as that may seem, I really don't think it is. I think Jun and Jun has misplayed this considerably. Yep, I think Yukaru has a tremendous position. This is what I was talking about. He might have played this opening thinking to himself, 
have started out uh, fantastically in uh, the match so far. Won two games. I have black pieces right now. Uh, I don't mind making a draw, play a solid opening, maybe play for a win with white in the last round. Instead, he's just accidentally winning. Like, he just has a great position for no Crazy. reason. An easy play, which is so valuable in a rapid game. Bishop g4, f5. The cost of a move here is not high. Even if black makes an inaccuracy, he's so, so solid that it, it really is hard to ruin your advantage. Car doesn't really make inaccuracies, though. And I think things are getting worse and worse here for the women's world champion. We'll see if she'll be able to wheel her way out of this highly unpleasant position. In the meantime, all four games are underway, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to look at our bird's eye view. And some of them have already reached a wild position. I'm looking at the top right, Wei Yi against Fedeseev. Exactly the kind of position you don't want against Vladimir Fedeseev, typically. And the Grunfeld game on the bottom left is just as crazy, Amon. Yeah, the the bottom left definitely has caught my attention with that sort of mean on h5. Like, what the heck is going on there? Fedeseev against Wei Yi is just such a star studied matchup down you never know who's going to take your place we're going to go back to the bird's eye view for a second um alina is in the kind of position in which the evo bar might be showing an advantage for white but that's the great thing about the grunfeld i think similar to the king's indian amon yep. even if black is objectively much worse than the grunfeld the game's never over because white center can really collapse at any moment yep that's a, a great point and probably one of the reasons why opens Amon, unsurprisingly, I think Hikaru uh, yeah. continues to display surgical technique against Jun Jun. That's completely in the bag. It is, yeah. That that doesn't look like there's any chance uh, for Jun Jun there. I mean, Hikaru has been so dominant, and his position looks remarkably easy to play. Um, I trust that, that he's going to be winning that game. I'm looking at now the rest of the games, because if I'm looking at this from you know the Shanghai Tigers' perspective, we need points on the board here. Right? Uh, where are we going to get them? I see Wei Yi and Fedoseev. Essentially a must-win game. Because you think about it, Alina Kashlinska might very well win her game. Even though, Let's be retired to the bird's eye view. Because those two other games, now they officially become must-win games for the Shanghai Tigers. If they want to have... That's if, right. Not only if they want to make it to the fourth round of on, but if they want to have any realistic chance of staging a comeback. Yeah, I mean, we talk about how strong teams are you, you you see the shanghai tigers week after week they look unassailable oh oh and now, no and look at this look alina, at alina look she's at alina's about to position. win this match oh potentially oh my lands how did that happen it 